Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Graduation season is here. After graduating from high school, the pressure of knowing your purpose intensifies. I have seen young people nowadays confused about what is next. The lack of knowing God's perspective or vision for their future could be the reason for it. Or maybe several other things hindered them from doing so. I would say that even older people like me have the same problems as well. It is hard to start to venture into something new being 54. So whether you are 18 or older, we all have respective visions to discover for as long as we live. If you feel being in the dark about what you want to do in the future, this is for you. Today, let us talk about what is next discerning God's vision for us and how to find our purpose in life. Here is hoping that this vlog will help you find yours. I pray that my younger as well as my older audience will find this helpful. What did you want to be when you were little? Did you remember wanting to be an astronaut? a superhero, or maybe a dinosaur? I have always wanted to be a flight attendant. Thank God for not making it happen. I found out I did not like flying at all. At one point, I also wanted to be Wonder Woman. You know, how performing a pirouette is a means to spin Diana Prince around, shedding her civilian clothes and emerging as Wonder Woman. It was awesome. Being young makes it so easy to have daring dreams or to have ambitious visions. As we grow more mature, it becomes harder and harder for us to see what we are here for at this moment. Young or old, we all have wondered the reason why we were born. What is our destiny in this life or what career should we be doing? I will be sharing some of my past experiences in my personal and professional life, what I am doing now, and how they led me into finding and discerning God's vision for my future. What is vision? It is the ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. Vision is what God sees in me that I do not see in myself. It's His promise to all of us. Vision is a piece of a puzzle. It gets solved as we continue to believe that God will help us get there and see the big picture. God knew us before we were born. I believe that He made you and me unique to the purpose or assignment that He intended for us in this life. He carefully created us with talents, skills, and abilities before sending us into this world. Each of us is God's masterpiece that has a purpose from the day we were born until the day we die. Mark Twain said, The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. This perspective needs to be learned very early in life. Being born in Asian culture, finishing a four-year degree is expected. We value higher education for it is a social equalizer in the Philippines. As a principle, the government considers education as a right of every Filipino. It is a crucial investment that can break the seemingly endless cycle of poverty. It provides the people, particularly the youth, with more opportunities. And if your parents can afford it, they pretty much plan your future for you to become a nurse or a doctor. I finished the cheapest degree I could afford. It took me six years to finish that four-year degree. Working to pay my tuition fee while I study did lengthen those years. I thought that after that, I would be able to do something that I love. But I still have no idea what it is even after my college graduation. Nevertheless, I know I need to lend myself any job that gives me an income and will take me places someday. 
That is how I envisioned my professional life pretty much. How can you see a vision for yourself? Through discernment, it is a spiritual ability. Many of us cannot see or fail to see it in ourselves, or maybe we do not know how to accomplish it. Discernment needs to be developed first by getting to know and receiving Jesus in our hearts. Believing that He came to save us and give us a future makes a big difference if we want to know our purpose. The best decision I made when I was 13 years old. We all know that life is unfair and very stormy. You should also know that the devil comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Expect setbacks, problems, and hardships for as long as we still live in this fallen world. It is just the reality of life. We will surely need someone bigger and stronger than ourselves to steady us. An anchor to keep us stable when storms of problems and uncertainty rock our boat. Jesus is the most secure anchor in my life. I could tell you that in my experience. Everything that I have no control of in any situation, I learned to give it up to Him. It takes faith and practice to have that kind of trust especially for someone like me who wants to be always in control and thrives on self-sufficiency. Keep close and develop that personal relationship with Him through prayer and studying His Word every day. It is the only way to develop the ability to judge well if you are doing your purpose in life and hearing Him directing your future. Choose to trust God and His promises, knowing He always leads us in what is best even when we do not understand the reasons for it. Without Him, vision is very different. Most people that believe solely in themselves, persons, or things only get disappointed most of the time. That also leads to discouragement and losing sight of the vision God has for them. If you have to believe something, believe in God who created and destined you to discover these visions. Focus and know what He says who you are and what He has for you. There is comfort and strength in knowing the unchanging truth of who you are in Christ in a world full of uncertainty and competition. Someone will always tell you that you are not good enough. Developing this confidence in Jesus early on is a must-have to prepare you. It will help you tremendously to stay focused and confident in His visions for you. What does God say about you? First, you are loved. John 3.16 speaks of the gravity of God's love so clearly. You may say, I am worthless, but God says Jesus died because you are worth it. You have worth. You may say, I have been rejected, but God says you are His. You may say, I am nothing special, but God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are made new and full of the Spirit. You may say, I am afraid, but God says you are powerful, loved, and have a sound mind. You may say, I am lost, but God says He gives you direction. You may say, I am purposeless, but God says you are created with a purpose.
believe that God has a plan for you. John chapter 10 verse 10 says that Jesus came so that you may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. I believe that God has a good plan for me. Since childhood, I have clung to this promise. He gave me hope and a future. It is impossible to have faith if we do not have hope. Hope is a positive expectation. Changing negative thinking with positivity will help us better the way we deal with life. Negative confessions about ourselves and our situation do not add value to us. So smile and know that God is working in your life. Even when you think or feel that He is not doing anything, He is at work. Our mantra every day should be, God is working in my life right now. Be flexible in every season of your life. In life, we all will be doing things called jobs. A season that you will have to do some things that are not your favorite. Jobs that pay the bills but not necessarily jobs you love. Do what you need to do for a season. It could be the job you have now. Be grateful for opportunities that come your way. I understand that it is hard to do a job that you do not like. I often hear former co-workers complaining and unhappy about the work we have to do on the job. One piece of advice that I would like my younger audience to know is that always do your very best in any occupation you get to have. Develop work ethic. Come to work early, be ready to do your job well, and be grateful that you get to have that opportunity to earn. You will discover that all those work experiences and how you perform in those jobs will open opportunities in your future. During my 20s, I landed a job in the city as an aerobic instructor. It has nothing to do with my four-year degree at all, but God allowed it to happen. I did not love that particular position, but I did my best for five years. The Philippines is full of college graduates with very few job opportunities. You just can't be too picky. You grab any job opportunity that opens up. Later on, I then discovered that I love personal training. I pursued it, studied for it, and got a certification. I have been a fitness trainer for 25 years. This profession got me places. Having performed well with my previous jobs, I got recommendations to work abroad. From the Philippines to Kuwait, and now in the United States of America. Different than what I thought I would be after graduating. I thought I would be a teacher just like my mom and grandmother. In hindsight, it was still teaching, but in the gym. Allowing myself to be flexible in embracing that first job, despite it not what I studied in college, made me discover my true passion in the end. God will not let you do something forever that will hinder you from getting to the vision He has for your future. Everything that you have to do at the moment has a purpose. Joyce Meyer said in her book, When you hear yourself saying, I can't keep doing this, it is a sign that something needs to change. You and your family, co-workers, or other people you are involved with will have to face reality with a willingness to make changes. There is a reason why some people love their jobs while some do not. Why can't we all be president, or teachers, or singers, or scientists? It's because each of us was made uniquely to the very purpose that God intended for us in this life. As we age, His will for us changes like the seasons. In your younger years, you hustle from job to job, probably get married, and have kids. As you get older, you think about retirement and find new ways of enjoying it or probably find a job 
or finding hobbies to occupy your day. At a certain age, it is scary to try something new. Sometimes we settle for what is familiar. Many people work at jobs that they hate for most of their life. Maybe they make a lot of money doing work they did not enjoy. Or they choose finances over fulfillment and contentment in God's will. They may never have the courage to step out in faith and follow their heart's desires. If you are doing something outside of God's will, there will be frustration and struggle. It will be hard and unfulfilling. There will be no sense of purpose. But it is not a reason to quit everything. Sometimes, God allows many things that are not His perfect will, and that is to educate, give you experience, or for you to make connections that will be valuable when you finally move into that for which He has created you. Always be grateful when you have an opportunity to work. It is always a blessing to have a job. Just remember that there are places here on earth that job opportunities are not available. Be flexible in embracing all that, and God will give you that discernment when it is time to move on. I was nervous when we had to move the third time last five years ago. Every time I move, I lose and had to start a job. In this move, God had blessed me with an opportunity to retire from the fitness industry. My career life was interrupted and had changed course. I may have felt lost for a moment. I have gotten used to always having a job and income of my own. The questions of what is next had come up often. Somehow, I think that earning my own money is the definition of being successful. That has always been my perspective growing up. I am just finding out that it is not. The season of not knowing what is next became an opportunity to appreciate the real meaning of success. Success is knowing your life is filled with an abundance of love, good health, friends, and family. I am grateful for all the things God has given me that money cannot buy. If you can appreciate this in your life, you are already experiencing success. One of the benefits of being my age is the ability to look back. I feel more successful now that I am not chasing after financial security solely. I mean, it's always a good thing to have that established early on. Welcome the season where you can earn a living. Be wise in stewarding your finances as early as possible. But when you are after what God has called you to do, it will affect you differently than anything you have done before. God always makes a way when He wants us to do something specific. During this new beginning, I learned that when it is time to stop doing one thing and start doing something else comes, God will provide a way for us to do it. It will be enjoyable, purposeful, peaceful, and will reflect His perfect will in our lives. Passion and discernment play a role in finding your vision. One day, these became more clear in my heart and mind. This is how this channel was born, when fitness meets faith. I have no idea that God would want me to talk about those two topics in a vlog. At first, I was telling God, are you kidding me? I'm too shy talking in front of a camera. I have wrestled with this vision for two years, but God did not quit on me. He showed me another way of doing things for this channel. At the beginning of the pandemic, He made me look around my office. There was a tripod a camera, a computer, and a smartphone. It was all there all along. The pieces of equipment are all provided for already. The timing was also perfect since we are all on lockdown. All I need to do is to stop the excuses and start obeying. 
use the skills, talents, and abilities that God gave me since birth. I am still discovering talents up to this day. I get to use what I studied in college as well, writing a blog in English. I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts major in English. Lately, God revealed to me that I could paint in watercolor as well. I am still a newbie when it comes to art and blogging. I have no formal education in painting or videography. But here I am getting used to embrace this new stage and being flexible in discovering visions in this new season of my life. Friends, remember to keep on learning new things. I have no idea where these new visions will lead me, but one thing for sure, I believe that this is what the Lord wants me to do in this season of my life. My assignment has not changed. I get to share and point others to Jesus and help others through all these new visions. God has proven that He has already provided everything I needed to live a joyful and peaceful life. I am just grateful. Most of all, I love what I do and there is a sense of purpose and peace while I do it. As you start your journey into finding your vision, I encourage you to search your heart. Ask yourself if you are truly doing what God desires for you to do, or merely doing something to bring home a paycheck. Here are some practical steps that you can do to find your vision. Surround yourself with people that see your talents to help you find your vision. Get yourself a vision squad that will inspire and encourage you towards that. People that see those talents when you cannot see them yourself. A vision team that can push you forward towards God's perfect plan for you. I am fortunate to have a best friend and relatives that saw my talents and encouraged me to pursue them. His vision for us is tailor-made. He knows our gifts, skills, and abilities. We all have our race to run. He has something for you to do. And as to the talents you have been given, God has a purpose for that. Do you wonder why comparing ourselves to others does not accomplish anything? It blinds and cripples our ability to see how uniquely we're made. As I get older, I can look back and see what God has done. Former jobs became fragments or pieces of the big picture God has drawn for me. Do all the practical things you have to do to improve your talents, skills, and passions. Attend classes or get that certification. Never stop learning. As Jesus lives through believers, He develops each of us into a completely unique person we were meant to be. Have a journal. Write down your desire, your hope, and passion. Desire and passion are involved in knowing God's vision for you. It is an additional compass in finding your vision or purpose. Write down things that you care about and what God is telling you along the way. God has put all that in you for a reason. It also helps to write down questions like, Why is God making me do this? What do I love doing? What do I want? What do I see that I could do with all the past experiences that God allowed me to undergo? Write down the talents, gifts, and experiences that you have, and begin praying for God to show you the scriptures and directions of what He asks you to do. Jeremiah 29.11 contains a precious promise held dear by Christians the world over. In this verse, Jeremiah affirms that God is in control and He has good things in store. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. There will be verses in the scripture that will come alive if we let them. They will remind you of the vision God has planned ahead of you. Allow yourselves to dream big. God's plan for us is always the best. 
Let God interrupt you and change your path. Stand firmly on His promises. I pray that my younger audience will learn this early in life and get better perspective of their future and their purpose in this life. Thank you all for watching. Have a blessed day.